and welcome to today. Uh, today is about how to get FOST results on social media. So I'm going to take the letters F-A-S-T and I'm going to give you some amazing, amazing content today uh, because I cannot help myself. I just love sharing all about how you yourself as a business owner can gain control over your own social media marketing. Um, some people may not be in a position to outsource it to other people um, or are outsourcing it and not getting the results that they want. So they want to be able to understand it more um, or perhaps have been doing it for a long time and just unsure of whether or not they're doing it right or what they're missing out on. And hopefully I can shed some light on some of that today. So a little bit about myself. Um, I arrived 11 years ago from South Africa to Australia and knew nobody on the Gold Coast. My husband at the time, he got a job transfer and his income was the primary income. At that stage, I had twins that were four-year-olds, uh, twins that were four-year-olds and my other daughter who was one, so three daughters. And so basically three kids under the age of five, I was staying at home, didn't have the family support and the maids that I had in South Africa. Uh, and he lost his job. In the first two years, he was made redundant. And then the second two years, he was made redundant again. So my little part-time hobby job, uh, I really had to get working. Um, I had no choice but to get it working. And still to this day, he'd say, I used to play on Facebook all the time. And now I'm saying, well, it worked. It paid off. Um, and basically self-taught myself how to use the platform. Um, basically working from your personal branding to your business branding to become visible and to become known uh, in your industry so that you can stand out and be in front of your ideal client. I have since then gone on to get my social media marketing diploma because that was something that was important to me, um, not just being self-taught, but actually have the diploma behind me, um, as well as this year I went out and got a whole, won a whole bunch of business awards because again, it was important for me to be able to give my clients the, the best value. And there's a lot of people out there saying that they know what it is to do. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sure they have good, good tips as well, but I really want to give you some of what I, some of my own, what I've learned personally and what I've learned through the over hundred business owners that I've worked with worldwide now, some of the stuff that I've learned. So um, that's a little bit of an introduction about myself. Um, so the last three years I've been specializing in Facebook uh, and many people might say to me, why, why Facebook? And, and we're going to get into that now. So I'm going to screen share. And if you have any questions, please just write them in the chat box. And if it's really important and you want me to stop, I really don't mind. Just unmute yourself and say, hey, Chantel, and I'll be happy to answer that question um, to you. Uh, just reminding you as well that at the end of this, um, I will be sending you out all those bonuses and all those freebies, along with um, a booking link for you to book a call with me. So if I didn't touch on something or you're a little bit uncertain about something, please make those notes. Um, and as I said, I'm happy to actually go through those questions with you, as well as have a look at your, um, have a look at your profiles and give you some of my feedback. Um, so I'm going to screen share now. Um, and lovely PowerPoint presentation, uh, which means you don't get to look at me too much now, which is awesome. So how to get fast results using social media. And as I said, I'm a qualified social media coach and award-winning Facebook strategist. And why I say that and do that is not because I like to like give myself kudos or go me, me, me. But the thing is, is that if you want to stand out online, everybody has credibility. You need to find what their credibility is and you need to throw that to the front so that you can charge what it is that you want to charge and so that you can be chosen above everyone else in your industry. So uh, that's called credibility. And we do discuss it a little bit later on today. So why do I choose Facebook? Because everyone knows me, social media coach, but I talk about being a Facebook strategist. And the reason why I choose Facebook is because 93% of small businesses prefer Facebook because it's fun, entertaining, and engaging. And guess what? That's super cool for us as business owners because guess what? Our marketing then needs to be fun, entertaining, and engaging. Um, so did you know there are 2.8 billion monthly active users on Facebook? So people always say to me, oh, you know, I don't know if my ideal client is on Facebook. Uh, well, I think 2.8 billion monthly active users on Facebook, I'm sure that your client is on there. So Facebook can be an effective way to market and grow your business um, if you know how to efficient, uh, effectively use it. Um, as, a, as a Facebook strategist, I help small business owners identify income opportunities. Um, and this is an important one for me because at the end of the day, it's not just about making friends and it's not just about getting engagement. It's not just about getting liked. It's not just about people sharing your content. 
It is about you being actually able to create income opportunities and generate income and grow your business from your platform or else your time is wasted. Okay. And many of the strategies that I do teach are organic because if you don't get the organic foundation right, your paid advertising will not work. And in fact, many paid advertising doesn't work because organically they haven't actually set up their profile correctly, don't have a strategy, don't have the fundamentals in place, which we're going to talk about today. Um, and a lot of their funnels, and I know everybody freaks out about the F word, but a lot of their funnels are actually broken and they don't work. So I'm going to shed some light today a little bit on that as well. But did you know there's 60 million active business pages um, and there's only a small part of that actually do paid advertising, although it is becoming more and more popular. The average advert click-through rate is only 0.9%. So why I say this and why this is so important, why I slow down for dramatic effect is because 0.9% is the average click-through rate for paid advertising meaning that potentially you're gambling your hard-earned money away. So you have really got to get the foundations and your strategy right before you even consider going and doing Facebook advertising. So 49% of users like a post to support a brand they like. Um, and today we're gonna to talk about that because you know the 51% of users um, may not like a post, but they are actually what I call cheerleaders um, and they are incredibly important because people often like post to your content don't necessarily buy from you but they play a very important role in your in your online marketing um, and I'm sure you've all heard videos have the highest rate of engagement um, I can also say here that videos can also ruin your reputation if videos are done sporadically with no consistency or forethought or strategy videos done badly can actually jeopardize your business doing Facebook lives and just going um, 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 and not having any clear topic or call to action can actually stop people from even looking at your business further on. So it is important that if you are gonna use videos, they don't have to be professional. Certain videos do need to be professional in your business, but some of your, your lives and that, they don't need to be professional, but they do need to have good value. They do need to offer good value. They do need to talk to your ideal client and they do have to have a call to action. They do need to be structured. So we will talk about that a little bit long, later as well. So firstly, let's go to Facebook world because most people don't understand the full capabilities of Facebook world. So here is, is Facebook land for you. Okay. Um, firstly, you're allowed one personal profile. Now, if you're a man, men seem to set up multiple profiles because when they go to log in, instead of logging in, they actually create a new profile by putting in a new email and password. And this is a true story. The unfortunate thing about this is that when people have multiple profiles, it makes them look dodgy online. And when people go to befriend you, they find it a little bit dodgy and then obviously you're gonna lose a bit of trust. The other problem that happens is people often don't attach their business page to their personal profile, um, which we can talk about a little bit later today as well. So you have one personal profile. You're legally only allowed to have one personal profile on, on uh, Facebook. Um, and it's a private account. So it's private unless you make it public. So you can make certain aspects of it public. All right, so your personal profile is limited to 5,000 friends. So once you get to 5,000, you've got to start unfriending people. So you want to make sure they're the right friends. There is a section for your bio to fill in your contact details, which you can make public or private. So each part of these, you can actually decide who sees it. The public, meaning people that, um, if it's public, it means people don't have to be on your friends list and they can see that information. Or alternatively, if it's friends, it means they have to be on your friends list to see that information. Um, so you want to make sure that you understand those, those privacy settings and you set yours up correctly. Uh, your business details, your digital links, so that's to your website um, and any other social media links. Your featured photos, so you've got up to nine featured photos which come up first in your profile. Your relationship status, um, so that is if you want to use your profile for dating or whether or not you want to discourage people from um, propositioning you online. Uh, your location, and I do ask that people not to go and put in their business at uh, their personal address. Please put in your business address rather. Family members, this is another one that I don't really like from Facebook. Um, and I'll explain it later with the algorithm. So Facebook wants you to do that so that they can understand who you are a little bit better. 
Um, but I actually don't like you to actually put in your members, your family members, because if somebody did go online and they did troll you and they were unhappy with you, they would have direct access to your family members. And everybody's at different um, levels in Facebook. So you want to make sure that they can um, understand how to use it, uh, that, that they're not going to be trolled. Uh, you can put in your life events. You can check in. You can run events which are private on your personal profile. The privacy settings are separate. So your privacy settings in your private profile and your business page are different. So you have to set them up separately. You can tag yourself or turn your tagging features off. You can message people. There is Facebook story, which is like Facebook's take on Snapchat, meaning that content only lasts for 24 hours and then it disappears. But some people wish to watch Facebook rather than read Facebook. So I just say that if you're in that box, it can post Facebook story. I just say if it's there, just tick that and it'll go up to Facebook story. Profile preferences, uh, your favorite quote, details about you, which a lot of people don't fill out, which is a shame because um, it would be good for you to have your information there so people can know whether or not they want to network and connect with you. Your birthday, although most people hide their birth date. All right, so that takes us to our business page. So for our business page, business pages are public, okay, unless you block someone. And when you block them, you've actually got to block them in the business page. So not on your personal page, in your business page. So privacy settings are separate. So here you've got business page, you can have multiple pages. Although when I'm working with business owners, I say to them, try to have as little business pages as possible. Because each business page that you have, you have to manage and you've got to manage well. So if you're going to have these, these platforms, you have to use them properly and, and have a professional online presence. The more you have, the more time it's going to take. So rather have a strategy to try and keep as few as, as, as possible. So with them, you don't have friends, you've actually got fans and they're unlimited. You can do reviews, uh, you can have reviews or it's actually called recommendations now. Um, so you cannot have that on your personal profile. So you see a lot of business owners set up their personal profile as a business page. However, it's not unlimited, it's not public, and you cannot do leave reviews. And 80% of people read reviews before they purchase. There's a click to contact button, uh, which last week I was at a meeting and a business coach had had a website designer set up his Facebook page for him and they hadn't even activated his click to contact button, meaning nobody could contact him. Um, they couldn't call him. So you want to make sure your call to action button is up. Uh, your physical address, again, please do not put in your home address because it is public. Page story, which is the same as Snapchat of what we spoke about earlier. Response rate, meaning that, in fact, Google and Facebook will judge you on how fast you respond. So, for example, a mechanic at 118-day response rate. Um, and if you were stuck on the side of the road and went to Google it in Facebook or on Google, they, he wouldn't come up because he had a 118 day response rate. And if somebody was looking for a car to be fixed immediately, uh, he wouldn't show up. So you wanna check your response rate is quick. There are three search categories, which actually Facebook has just reviewed and they've changed that now to two search categories. And the first search category listed is the most important as it's the first one shown. Uh, story, so there's actually a about story section, which is kind of like your details about you. So you wanna make sure that that's set up. You can run events and those events are public. However, if you do nothing with events, nothing will happen. Um, and there is actually, if you check it on my website, there is, a, um, there is a blog as well as a live on uh, events, on how to actually run events successfully. You can set up your services or shop or both. Um, and you can actually take payments through Facebook or through your own websites as well. Offers. So you can run offers, there's an offers tab, there's a community tab, meaning that anybody tags you, those photos will actually be cataloged there, which is great for social proof and credibility. Uh, you can link your groups. There's an inbox, so it's separate to your message box. Uh, messaging response, uh, so you can actually, you don't have to have a bot, Facebook actually has its own bot, so you can set it up, for example, for the mechanic, he might say, um, I'm currently busy at the moment, but please, could, for a foster response, please could you contact the reception? They're waiting to take your call. Page roles and administration, meaning that you can have other people manage your page. Um, also take note that if you give someone admin rights, they have the same rights as you on your page. 
So I would prefer to give them um, editor rights. And if you finished working with that person, delete them from that role as soon as possible. I've, uh, many people I've worked with have actually lost their Facebook account um, due to someone else having access. You can obviously do paid ads and boosts. You can tag people or be tagged. It is highly affected by the algorithm. Um, and we're gonna talk about the algorithm later. And you can schedule things. So you don't really need an outside scheduling tool. In fact, Facebook will often penalize you for having other outside scheduling tools because they're trying to keep you inside the platform. All right, from there you can have groups. So groups are called community groups. And they are um, called members. So you can have members in those groups. You can set up your groups to be public, closed or secret. You, there's a description, so you can decide how you want to run those groups. And there's a clear description that people can read so that they know um, what's expected in that group. There's rules and etiquette. So a lot of people say to me, what's the hashtags? Because Facebook actually doesn't work with hashtags. It's just group admins use hashtags to control the group. It's not that they work well on Facebook, because Facebook, you don't need hashtags. Um, but groups do use them to control the groups. Uh, there's also categories, so if they're public, it's, there'll be categories, so it can be found. Again, there's, you, there's administrative roles. You can run events, and one of my favourite things about them is that you can actually, um, you can actually put files in there. So, uh, for example, if you want to monetize your group, people can pay you money to do a program. You can let them into a secret group. You can have that whole group set up with files on the side, and then you can actually... Um, take them through a program, a fully paid program through there. However, one thing we do need to realize is that Facebook is, Facebook is owned by Facebook. So Facebook goes down, all the content is gone. So whatever you do in those groups, make sure that you have saved everything to um, your, your Google Drive or to a cloud so that you actually have all those documents else you'll lose everything. I know a lady that did a one year program through Facebook and then accidentally deleted her account and lost a year's worth of content from a program, and I think she was charging $5,000 a year for that program. She lost her lives, she lost her video, she lost everything uh, because she hadn't saved it. I'd hate that for you to, uh, to happen to you. Scheduling, which is super cool, you can schedule in there as well. You can also direct message people through there and you can tag people. In fact, it is important now with Facebook that you do, um, that you actually do tag people um, because the algorithm now doesn't actually give notifications to everybody in the group because that was a big complaint from, from people in the group. So um, you now it is better that you directly are talking to somebody. It is better that you at them, you, you tag them, so they are notified and they can get that information. So before we start with the fundamentals of Facebook, I just want to check, does anybody have any questions? If you do, could you just unmute yourself now quickly? All right, so we're all good. All right, so these are the fundamentals of Facebook. So number one is you know, know who you are. Your personal branding is so important. In fact, the first thing that I do is sit down with people and establish their personal profile um, on Facebook. However, if this translates to absolutely everybody, uh, everybody's social media. You have to understand how public or private you wanna be. You've gotta make that decision. You've gotta know how it impacts the people around you. Um, how you want to be seen, how far you're going to go to be, to be visible. Um, and you don't have to worry about which way you go because the reality is, is that people get used to the rhythm that you're at. So if you're only going to be on there three or four days a week, people will get used to your rhythm. The key is for you to be consistent. You want to be uh, consistent with your personal branding because it is important from a trust perspective and you want to make sure that it is genuine and authentic and it's consistent across all socials. So you're not perceived as one thing on one channel and another on another. Number two is you've got to know your ideal client and intimately. So everyone always says to me, everyone's my ideal client. Well, the reality is, is that if you can niche that down um, to say a 10 year age gap um, and a gender as well, um, and get more specific on your demographic, the reality is you're going to be able to target them a lot better because fluff doesn't really work well um, on social media. The more fluffy you are and the more cryptic you are, the more you actually lose people's attention and the, more less, the less likely they are to actually continue following you or to purchase from you. 
all right, so you want to know their likes, their needs, their wants, their frustrations. So you know how to talk to them and you know how to solve their problem. You also want to know how to make them happy. So there's two kinds of ways to go when you're posting online. You can either go from a pain perspective and resonate with your ideal client's pain um, and, then offer their and, and then offer them a solution to their problem. Or alternatively, you can sell them the dream. So you can show them how working with you is going to give them the result that they want. So number three is stalk your competitors. So this isn't so that you can copy them, but it's so that you can recognize what your points of difference are so that you can stand out. Point of difference is so, so important. And if you ever see me posting on social media and I say pod, that's what I mean by point of difference. So one of your points of difference is you. So you are in your business. What makes you in your business different from everyone else? And it's usually your story and your why. So you want to make sure that that's in there because that will help people to connect with you and resonate or uh, build a relationship. Branding consistency. So this includes, your this includes not only your graphics, but your key messaging. So people go like, what is your key messaging? Um, and I'll give you an example. You know, everyone knows, uh, often when I pitch, I use the same sentence. I empower business owners with the skills and strategy to successfully manage their Facebook profile to generate more than just fans, but funds. So there's a couple different variations and versions in that, but it's important. You want to have a clearly defined key messaging that speaks directly to your ideal client so that when they see it and they see it and they see it, you become memorable. Um, so many people are losing their ideal clients because their key messaging is confusing. One day they're saying you do this and the next day you say you do that. Um, and we will talk a, bit, a little bit about it later, but it is so important that you have a niche or desirable offer and that you don't have too many of them. You will always catch the people around. However, it is vital that you have, um, that you have something that you become known for. Um, all right, cool. So we talk about branding across all platforms, and that means too that all your profiles that you have, every social media platform has the same consistent branding, both in the graphics and your key messaging. So number five is just a strategic plan. So like, what is your overall intention? You know, is it clients per day? Is it likes? You know, what are you exactly hoping to achieve? What is the outcome that you're looking for? And what is the action you're going to take from that outcome? And at the end of the day, as I said, it's not just about getting engagement um, and it's not just about growing your profile, but it's how you're actually going to churn those leads into paying clients. Um, and this is something I learned on Tinder, which is a, true, a true story. Um, you know, if you, I, I learned this from a um, relationship therapist and she said, the longer you talk to somebody on Tinder, the more you leave them hanging there, the likely they are to get cold. Um, and it translates completely to online marketing. The more you sit there and the more you message backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, the less likely they are to take any action and the more likely you are to actually make mistakes. Um, so it is better to get those people offline straight away, uh, whether or not it's a phone call, whether or not it's, uh, you want to qualify them through a, um, maybe through an inquiry form. But yeah, you definitely want to take them off social media as soon as possible. And getting their email address is one of those important things too. So R and R, and there's actually three more R's. Um, since I've started writing my book, <laughs> there were two R's and we've now come up with five. So I've added the other three in there. Um, but it's not rest and relaxation. It's reviewing and responding. So you need to review the work that you're doing. Once a week, you need to go into all your platforms and you need to look at what's working and what's not working and you need to start noticing patterns. What, is, what type of content is working? What time of the day? What type of images? Um, you know, who, who are the people that are responding? Um, so not that so that you can try and copy that, but you need to start recognizing patterns so that you can start building on those patterns. And the things that aren't working, you need to let go of them, all right, as soon as possible and try something new. So responding is the next thing. Um, there's so many people that go and they do these uh, attention-seeking things, which is all of what we're trying to do to be more visible. Um, so I don't say that in a derogatory manner, but these attention-seeking ways to get a response. And then when we get a response, we don't actually respond or we don't follow up. Um, following up is huge. So not only do you have to respond, but you've got to follow up. And as I said, one of those things is to get those people off social media. So you want to develop and build a genuine relationship. Consider you having a conversation with somebody. If you asked a question and somebody answered back, 
you wouldn't end the conversation, get up and just walk out. You would carry on talking to them and either end it politely um, or take it to the next level. And social media is the same, so we do need to follow those rules. The bonus R's are referrals. So that means you need to have a referral system in place with the existing clients that you have because word of mouth is so huge and social media is one of the best ways word of mouth can travel. So you want to have a referral system in place. Number two is recommendations. So you want to have a recommendation or review strategy. You want people to come onto your page and review you because when they do that, their friends get to see, um, their friends get a notification to see that they bought from you. But not only that, when someone comes to buy from you, they're going to have social proof and credibility from you um, and they're more likely to buy from you. And the next one is reputation. You want to constantly be focusing on having a good reputation online, but you also want to have a reputation strategy in place or a crisis management strategy in place for if you were going to be trolled, what would you do? Do you have someone else watching your account? Because the more visible you get um, and the more public you get, the more crazies you encounter with the real world. And that's a true story. So um, you want to make sure that, um, that you do have a reputation management um, strategy in place as well. So number seven, and I've touched on this, but it's so important. You want to get them the hell of social media. And this means you have to have a funnel. And everyone goes, what is a funnel? Um, and basically what it is, is, um, and you know what, as a bonus, extra bonus, I'll add this in as well. And if I don't, please um, send me back an email. But I'm going to send you a, a private video that I have, with, which explains the funnel a little bit more in depth. So basically you want to have a solid profile up at the top. You want to be visible. You want to be known for something. And from there, you want to create meaning, get meaningful conversations. And from those meaningful conversations online, you want to get those conversations offline um, so that they then can buy your program. So what is that? Is it them, you know, downloading some of your content? Um, is it offering a free training session? Is it book a free discovery call with me? You know, what exactly is your funnel? So many people, what I call, are spitting on social media, meaning they go into social media and they just do a whole bunch of stuff, which can be confusing. And at the end of the day, it's not actually taking anyone anywhere. They're not actually ever asking for clients or ever showing them how that they can be work with them. Um, and as I will say later on, it is not selling, it's servicing. As long as that you give good value um, and you're not just, um, you know, trying to get to third base before you've gone to first base and bought them a coffee, it's the same kind of strategy. Um, so number eight is have a professional profile. Um, so many people go and they set up all these profiles um, and then a lot of people forget they even have those profiles. But the reality is, is that it's better for you not to have a profile if the profile is not well managed. So people, uh, people will find your images, they will stalk you online. Um, and if your profile isn't set up properly and if it doesn't tick all the boxes and if you don't get a yes from your ideal client, you straight away block them and you put fear into them and basically they won't look at you again. It's very, very hard to earn trust again from someone if it's not set up properly. And this genuinely means your personal profile as well. And many people will say, I wanna use my personal profile personally only, and that's okay. But many people don't actually understand their privacy settings properly. So they don't actually understand what is public and isn't public, which can affect, um, it can affect your image. For example, and uh, Dean doesn't mind me telling the story because he openly shares it. Um, but you know, he was going to networking events in this lovely suit um, you know, for an IT company and he said he didn't have a Facebook page and within three seconds I found about four profiles of him in line, all of which he thought he had a hidden profile, it was public and his naked bum was all over all of them. So I literally saved his ass. Um, and as I said, he's happy to share that story as well. So we went in and we cleaned his profile up because people forget that they set up profiles when they were younger and they don't realize what is actually um, still out there. So you want to make sure you go and delete those dodgy pictures or at least hide them so they cannot be found, pro, um, cannot be found publicly. So once again, if you do have images, make sure they're consistent. You don't want to look dodgy. Uh, people are going to stalk you. Let's be honest, who here stalks people? We all stalk people. Um, and if people are going to work with you, or if they're going to buy something from you, they are either going to stalk you, especially if you're service-based. If you're service-based and they're going to work with you, they are going to stalk you. Um, if it's product-based, they're going to read your recommendations. So you've got to make sure that you have them. 
All right, so before we move on to the next page, guys, um, again, does anybody just have anything? Um, does anyone have anything that they would like to discuss, ask a question for, or else I will just keep going? All right, excellent. As I said, we are going to have a one a one on one anyway, regardless. So that's all cool. Oh, okay, let's have a look. Chat box. If a potential client went to a lockdown profile, wouldn't that make them also feel uneasy? Yeah, thank you for that one, Sarah. Because a um, hundred percent. So there's a couple of business coaches on the Gold Coast who insist on having exceptionally private uh, Facebook profiles. Um, and what happens is when where go to networking groups and people befriend them. People then go and try to befriend them on Facebook and either can't add them as a friend because they've got it turned off that people can add them. Um, or sometimes they hide their friends list. And when they hide their friends list, people can't see mutual friends. And we all develop trust a lot quicker when we go on and we go, oh, you know, you know, you know, Sarah, you know, how do you know? A hundred percent. Uh, especially if you're service-based, um, it, it definitely does depend on your um, um, on how you want to run your profile. But 100%, it can look exceptionally dodgy. And uh, one of the other things uh, that I want to say is your profile picture. It is vitally important that your personal profile picture is a clear picture of you, especially if other people on social media share your name. So, for example, I tagged. A, um, a business on the Gold Coast to say thank you because I went in and bought clothing from their shop. I went on, I added the person, tagged them. There were two people there. I had to look at the picture and I couldn't kind of see who was who. I tagged the other person and I got a message from this lady saying, why are you tagging me? This isn't my business. What are you doing? And I just apologized and said, I'm really sorry. But the pictures, especially on your phone, are so tiny. We cannot see your face. So if people are going to be befriending you because they are visually going to be working with you or seeing you, you've got to make sure that your dog's not there, that your flowers aren't there, um, that your partner's not on there because people are not going to be able to befriend you because of you. So if you really truly want to be known, um, especially as I said, if people have got the same name as you, you've got to make sure um, that you have a clear profile picture. I'll give you an example. Um, James Dean. For some reason, business owner. Uh, for some reason, parents think it's a good idea to call their kids James when their surname's Dean. So if you go onto Facebook, there's something like 20 James Deans, um, and I worked with a James Dean, and it's incredibly hard because you go on there, and, he, and he's actually an actor. And I said to him, right, what well, rather to go with his first, his nickname, which is Jimmy, because everyone calls him Jimmy, because he's going to be more likely to be found. Because if he's going to try grow his profile, and there's all these other James Deans. It's going to be difficult. People don't know who to add. Um, and you're basically losing out on, on building your personal brand. And personal brand is incredibly important, especially for service-based businesses, like I've mentioned. All right, so the A word. Now, the algorithm completely freaks out everybody. And everybody blames the algorithm on everything. But I love the algorithm because if you understand the algorithm um, and get to know it, when Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or anybody updates or changes their platform, um, you can kind of go, okay, I understand why they're doing that. Um, so for example, Facebook right now has taken away the likes. So just like an Instagram, you can't actually see uh, how many likes a post is getting. So the business owner can see, but your clients can't see. Now, why is this? Because they are trying to encourage genuine relationship building. And they don't want people liking posts just for the sake of popularity or for the sake of liking. They want people to genuinely interact and engage because they want to, not because they feel obliged to. Um, and this is why they've, they've hidden those now. Um, so if you understand how it works, it, it makes a lot more sense when they, run, when they change these things and then you can slightly adapt your strategy accordingly. So the algorithm is a prediction. So when you're inputting data into your profile and when you're engaging and you're talking to and giving attention to different things, guess what? It starts to match you with people who are putting in the same data and are interested in the same data. So I always say to people, it's like plenty of fish. It actually matches you. Um, and this is incredibly important for, um, incredibly important for organic, for your organic. 
Um, because in paid advertising, you go in and you actually put in what it is that you want to, um, you know, what you, you put in your demographic, you'll go, okay, I want this audience, they've got to be interested in this, they've got to show this, they've got to do that. But again, it's on the data that they've put in. So if they have incomplete profiles, if they don't have, if they are not engaging and if they're not putting their information into Facebook and if they don't set it up properly, um, and this includes your Instagram and your LinkedIn, if you're not using, depending on what platform you're on, if you're not using the right hashtags, and if you're not respecting the, the actual platform for what it is, and you're not putting that data in, Facebook can't match you. And even the ads can't match you. Because the ads, um, so for example, if, if in my Facebook profile, I go and I say, oh, Sir Richard Branson, he's coming to the Gold Coast soon, can't wait to go and see him. And I put that into Facebook. Facebook reads that and goes, okay, I'm into business, I'm into networking, I'm into events. Anybody else who's interested in that, they're going to be, they're going to be drawn to that contact as, content as well. And that'll start to pop out on their profile too. So it is important as a, per, as a person who wants to use social media marketing, you need to go in and make sure that your profile is set up properly. So, and your personal profile, business pages, your groups, everything, all the right content is set up properly so Facebook can match you properly. So, and with Instagram, it's hashtags. You've got to have the right hashtags so that it can match you cor correctly. It has to be set up properly so it can match you correctly. So what is the algorithm? It predicts or determines or chooses what goes on your newsfeed, but it also determines what goes on your ideal client's newsfeed, and this is so important. It scans all the input and content on Facebook or whatever platform you're on, and it determines how interested you'd be in seeing that. So if I show interest in business owners who are interested in social media, guess what? Everything on my newsfeed starts to become about people who are interested in social media and interested in business. And this is why I love the algorithm because I've trained my algorithm to show me what it is that I want to see. So everyone always says to me, oh, you must live on social media because you're always popping up. Um, well, it pops up on my newsfeed. I actually don't have to go searching for it because I engage and I go in and I look and I show interest in that, so it pops up. It then also considers how you would respond to the content. So it's all about getting engagement for, for these platforms. So if it thinks that you're gonna to respond to that content, it is going to um, put it up. And I'll use an example. Last night, I put up a post saying, um, asking for a friend, would you let your 15-year-old your daughter catch an Uber at 9.30 at night? Um, and I think I got, I got so much engagement. And guess what? Every parent who had a child around the same age, all these people were responding. So Facebook straight away went, right, you're talking about a 15-year-old girl, anyone who's got a 15-year-old girl, anyone who's a parent, anyone who's ever put an Uber. And all these people came in and gave their, their um, opinion. And that's basically how the algorithm works. Now, imagine if you did that in your business. It's the same. So you need to put in the right content. So if anyone has any questions, would you like to post it? I'm just going to... All right, sorry. All right, so the next one is social. The S is for social. Now, social media means it's cool. So in the olden days, we'd have to door knock. In the olden days, we would have to fly a drop. But social media is really social and we can actually reach more people. And this means that your tone needs to be social. So what happens is people tend to be overly salesy. There needs to be a good mix between selling and servicing, okay? Being of service. So you wanna tell your success stories, show statistics, share, show your services, share other people's content and offer your potential clients solutions, okay? It has to be about serving constantly. But, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit later, you have to have that call to action, you have to have that funnel, you've gotta get people off social media because doing all of this is gonna be nothing. If I go on every single day and I just show some success stories, it might evoke a curiosity enough for somebody to ask a question, but you do have to also offer them an opportunity to work with you. And it needs to be a simple process that works. So number two is tactful. Okay, time, 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 time is super important for all of us. 
And my biggest objection people get to me is I just don't have the time. And the reason is, is because they don't have the skills and they don't have the strategy. So if they knew what they were doing uh, and they had a strategy to follow every single day, they would wake up, they would do it. It wouldn't be a time waster and it would amount to money, which is really cool. Um, so you need to be tactful. All social media have different rules, okay? Just like your children. So you've got to treat them differently. Facebook is story-based. Instagram is picture-based um, and very hashtag-based. Uh, LinkedIn is very business orientated and skills based with limited hashtags, which is the same as Twitter. Uh, and TikTok is entertainment based. Um, uh, Snapchat as well, entertainment sort of based. So you've got to work out where to put your energy and it, wherever you decide your energy is going to go, you've got to make sure that firstly, it's the platform your ideal client is on. Secondly, you know how to fully use it to its full capabilities. Because everybody, every person I work with says to me that they know what they're doing. And then when they come to me, I'm sorry, but they just don't. Then most of them are doing a lot right, but there's a lot more that they could be doing to generate an actual paying result. And it's not their fault. It's just they don't understand the full capabilities of the platform. And mostly because they've been self-taught, self just like I was in the early days. I'm really asking you because now I've been to choose Facebook. Um, so I want to be tactful and I use a lot of my energy for that, but you still have to be consistent across all platforms um, and you want to put energy into the ones that generate money. Okay. I put all my energy into Facebook, but my Instagram, my LinkedIn, I follow all the rules they set up there and I maintain them, but my energy and my strategy all goes into Facebook. Because our time is important, there's no point in you going and throwing a million things out. Like I said, spitting all over the platforms, it's just going to be a waste of time. It's going to make you frustrated. Rather explore each of the programs, really get to know them, put your energy into them, make an outstanding, um, an outstanding profile um, and make sure that you're tactful in what you do. Um, you want to have an effective strategy which generates you actual paying clients. And if it doesn't, do something about it. Don't keep doing the same old, same old and expecting a different result. Again, does anyone have any questions before we go on to how to, how to generate leads on Facebook? All right, cool. All right, so some of you may or may not go that, know this, but we'll just go through it really, really quickly. And this is just to show you sort of the potential that there is on Facebook. So um, in business community and classified groups, the groups all have rules. It's important to know that. And it is important to always follow the group rules. Um, a person might go, hey, I'm looking for help uh, growing my business. I've got no marketing budget. Does anyone have recommendations? And then somebody that you may know, for example, in this case, Lizzie goes, action tells your idea, which is tagging. I get a notification. So this is important because most people don't check their notifications. So they go, they're not getting any leads. But um, I worked with a pesticide company. Um, a couple of weeks back, leads were there uh, and they weren't checking the notifications. So they weren't actually responding to any of the leads because they were missing the notifications. So it's like a car, the red light flashing, check your notifications. You will become better at checking them. You will become quicker at skim reading them and you'll start to notice the important ones. So it'll go action tell Girardi. Now, a lot of people may leave this tag because they'll go, okay, you know what? There's 50 other people who've also, uh, being tagged or have pitched and um, responded to this person. So people go, nah, don't worry about it. Um, never, ever, ever do that, okay? Always respond to the person. And as I said, always tag, because with the changes in the algorithm, if you tag, the person will get the notification. So I would go, hi, I'm Chantal Girardi, a Facebook strategist. I would tag my Facebook page so they have access to it. Um, if that's allowed in the group, some groups don't allow you to actually tag your business. Um, but most do if somebody's asking for your help. I empower business owners with the skills and strategy to manage their own pro profile. Discover how I've helped other businesses by reading my reviews and I would tag my Facebook page. Now, depending on the rules in the group, because some don't allow you to private message or direct message a person, um, I would then send that same message to the person and go and remind them where I saw it. So, um, uh, thank, uh, thank you to Lizzie who responded uh, to your group, to your group, uh, to your group request. Um, and this is my pitch. Let them know how can I help you. And I would then direct message them as well. All right. 
the reason I share in that one over there, I would share my reviews is because a lot of other social media people would be pitching and say, work with me, work with me. But I know that I have a substantial amount of positive reviews, which meaning that if people went on there, so as I said, look for credibility, find credibility and show people that because they will choose you over someone else. So I show them my reviews because that's going to give me the credibility then to say, okay, we'll choose me over somebody else. Um, all right. So, and as I said, I direct message to them only if it's allowed in the group or if the person has asked for it. Carefully read it because some people only say comment below and others might say, please don't comment below or direct message me. So always make sure that you read it correctly. I put out for a, I was looking for, I'm looking for a salesperson. And I put it out on social media and I said, um, uh, please do not comment below, but rather send an email to, please don't comment below and please don't private message me and send your resume to my email address with the subject line saying um, sales call position. Um, and I think I had probably 20 people, but only three people actually followed the instruction. So guess I only interviewed three people. Um, so make sure that you do read it. So the next one is um, on your personal profile or your business page, you want to post with intention. So I might post something along the lines of, and remembering this is my language, but to keep it social. Oh, did you know you might not be getting found because you have incorrectly set up your page. You ha have the wrong search categories. There are three of them and you're unaware of how to use them to get more clients. It's not your fault. You can't be good at any, everything. Let me help. So I've identified a pain point. I've shown them um, that there's actually three, ca uh, three categories, which actually in the last week has dropped down to two. Um, and people would go, what? So they've evoked curiosity. I've, rubbed, I've, I've got a pain point now because oh, I, might not, I don't know how to get clients. Maybe my profile's not set up correctly um, and I might go, let me help. So people now are going to like, they're going to share, they're going to comment or they're going to respond. And guess what? I'm going to review and I'm going to respond. Okay, and I'm going to get them on Facebook, which is important. All right, so this one over here, so three ladies on the call today, um, but this post generated 50 leads, uh, booked me 15 calls and got five new clients. And this is in a group where you are not allowed to pitch and you're not allowed to uh, put your business details in here. So I will show you this over here. I basically put this post up, shout out to Facebook, thanks for all the free leads, stats don't lie, all these results didn't cost me a cent, and I sure as hell don't mind putting a little time into it to apply the strategy, because it's free and it makes me dollars. How much time? 20 minutes per day. How many leads generated? 15 last week whilst I was camping. How many converted? Five, um, and I've still got calls this Monday, and hands up. So I have not put my business in there at all. Um, all I did was put in a photo um, of some stats, some insights, and hopefully this is going to let me play for you. But you could see over here, so that was the picture there. I got heaps and heaps of inquiries. Um, I had to keep view previous comments, view previous comments, view previous comments. And this was until, um, this was until, oh, this was until eventually somebody notified and, and people will report you. Um, so I would imagine someone else in the industry would have reported me and said, I'm getting too much, in, uh, you know, I've tricked them into it, which kind of did. Um, but basically, I got 50 leads. I booked 15 calls, five new clients from this one post over here. Um, but they did block me for, the, for a week. Um, but that was following the rules. So, yeah, sometimes you do have to be a little bit cheeky. Um, so this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier is about reviewing your in, uh, insights. So these over here are just some insights that I have uh, about how many people you've reached, how many ticket links. So this one over here is actually for an event. So you can see 22 ticket li links, 13 in the last seven days. If you look a little bit down on the bottom left hand corner, page activity, you know, new page likes 76. So this is in buying likes. This is going out and putting your page in front of your ideal client. Um, so that they come and actually like your page. So it's organic likes. Uh, new followers, clicks to your website, which is important. Phone clicks. So I don't encourage a call to action is not my phone clicks because um, people have to book to get a call with me. They, they can't just call um, because they probably miss me because I'm coaching. Um, but yeah, so it is important to go on and just have a look at these. Um, this one over here is for 
a post. So you can see 76 comments over here, 2,559 people reached. Um, and again, as I said, 76 comments. You wanna make sure that you go in there. This specific one over here was a health, wellness and fitness business where they were talking about people, what, what foods they don't like. And people might go, oh, you know what? That doesn't really translate. Well, it does because it's talking to the ideal clients. But the intention of this post was people were saying, I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. But their intention of doing this post was because they can create nutrition programs that take into account the foods you don't and do like. Um, and that, that, this was evoking enough curiosity and getting engagement enough to lead them into that. So there needs to be a purpose and intention for everything you're doing. So on the right hand side here, you can see this is an old one. That's basically how insights look. And I think there's been an update since then. Um, but you do need to be going in once a week. You can opt to look at the last seven days or the last 28 days. I do recommend that if it's your primary platform that you go in every seven days and you look at what's working and what not, what's not working. Literally takes you five minutes to do. It is important for you to also go look at posts. Uh, people to see that you're reaching the right people. Um, I recently worked with a lady um, who was targeting people in um, Mexico. She was target targeting people in Mexico, uh, and it turned out that people in Mexico were looking, but never. So they were looking, 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 and they didn't purchase. Once she started focusing on the UK, uh, people started purchasing. So she thought Mexico would be their ideal client, but what she realized is um, because it's a portable, it's actually a portable urinal. What she realized, well, what we realized together was that for a portable urinal, uh, people in Mexico would just pee behind a tree, whereas in the UK, they've got trams, it's often cold, they're more likely to use a portable urinal than the people in Mexico. So it is important to look at what's working and what not, what's not working. And we, we figured that out from watching uh, Insights and we were able to change that. So these over here are some of the things um, that you can see why you might be missing out on business. So this is an unprofessional profile. If you've got a poorly set up personal profile, your settings are too high, which means people can't even contact you, which is so often. Uh, you don't have your contact details up or working links to your business. This is a huge one. People think that their links are working and they're actually broken. Uh, you forget to remind uh, your people, friends and family what you do and that you're actually looking for work. So, so many people on their personal profile don't actually um, mention and say, hey, listen, um, actually, this is what I did today in my business. Does anyone know anyone? I've got availability. Uh, this actually works quite well in the beauty industry where they, turn, where they might say, I've got a hair appointment on Friday at 12. Does anybody want it? Um, we find that that works quite well, but people actually forget just to ask. Um, you're unclear of what you do. So clarity is super important. Uh, many people actually don't quite know what they're selling people into um, and they're unclear in their messaging. Um, so if you've set up your personal profile as a business page, this confuses Facebook's algorithm. Um, and you may lose out on the public search abilities, on including people may not befriend you. Um, if you don't know the group etiquette, you can get you may get blocked as well, and then you won't know how to actually leverage uh, the work, or leverage Facebook groups. Um, your post content, so you might be posting like an advertiser, showing no education, authority, relationship building, or humor instinct. So it is important that if you're just salesy all the time, it may not it it may not work. If your business page isn't correctly set up, if you're in the wrong search category, if your location uh, hasn't been set up correctly, or even your business name, you cannot believe how many Facebook business names have been set up incorrectly, meaning that they're not getting found because potentially there's another business with the same name. Um, you may be unclear on your points of difference or unique selling points. Um, you may not understand Facebook uh, sales funnels or conversion strategies, and people are getting lost. They've got no call to action, so you're not actually leading them into anything. Uh, you may not be consistent on Facebook. You may not answer your messages or create non-engaging posts. So the algorithm stops working for you. So you might actually have to get that algorithm going again. Um, and you don't understand how to read the notifications or to review your insights so that you can't actually work on your profile so that you start generating plain clients. So this over here, I added in um, as a bonus for you guys as well. Like basically when people come onto your page within three seconds or any profile, uh, within three seconds, you've got to get a yes out of them. So you constantly need to be showing, showing social proof, meaning they want to see other people's testimonials and referrals um, and success stories, okay? Number two is 
in order to get a yes from them, you have to show your credibility. So why should they choose you over everybody else? This is your point of difference. This is how many years in the industry, whether or not you're qualified, won awards, um, you're registered, insured, anything that you've got, you want to make sure that is in there. Um, you also want to show your expertise, so constantly showing your expertise so that people can trust that you know what it is that you're talking about. You want to add value, so give heaps and heaps of value all the time, but as I said, don't forget that call to action and that strategy of converting them into a client, else it all becomes a waste. Number five, you want to nurture relationships, and this is online and human to human. So many people come and they just want people to pay and buy things online, and the reality is human to human contact is still vitally important. You do need to have a call. You still need to have those one-on-ones because you have to be known. Uh, you've got to meet them offline as well. Number six is, as I said earlier, you've got to have that niche or that desirable offer uh, because you want to be known for one thing. It's much more important for you to be known for one thing than for you to be partially known for a thousand things. Number seven is your ba business backstory and why. Once again, people will, you'll get a yes from people if they understand your backstory and why because they can connect with you and resonate with you um, and they can see the value in what it is that you're doing. Number eight is community. So if you are involved in the community and you are going out to events and you're doing and you genuinely love your business and you love supporting like-minded industries, then it's important for you to collaborate and to go out and do all these other things um, and to show it, of course, on your social media platforms, collaborating with others because you'll get a yes from people as well. Now, and, and that's actually one that I learned during the awards this year is because they're very community orientated. They want to make sure that your business is catered for that. Number nine is solve a problem with your services. So at the end of the day, the client is narcissistic. They just want to know what you can do for me, for them. So for me, you want to make sure that, um, that you're solving their problem all the time. And that's what you want to show them. So you can go create these amazing services that have got all these funny names. Um, it's the same with product packages. You might go put together all these products and go, yes, yes, yes. But if it doesn't solve a problem, it's not going to work. Um, for example, lovely lady. Uh, Samantha from Sinchis, they do reusable Ziploc bags um, and they've got a litter, a litter free lunchbox kit. I mean, that's amazing because any parent could just go on and buy the litter free lunchbox kit because they know that now they don't have to worry about it because they're using reusable um, uh, bags. So um, you want to make sure that the product matches the ideal client, that you're not doing the service because you enjoy doing it, but it actually does match your ideal client and, and what they're willing to pay you for because taking payments important. If people aren't willing to pay you for that, then there's no point in you offering it. And that's true. And number 10 is your pitch. As I said, you want to make sure your key messaging is right and that your pitches are right. And if your pitches is right, you're going to get a yes from someone. Um, you know, and for example, even me advertising this online training today um, and talking about what was in there today, something would have resonated with you today, which would have got you onto this platform. Um, and hopefully that this should be answering any of the questions that you have as well. So does anyone have any questions while we're here? Does anyone have any questions? So far, as I said, you are going to get all those bonuses. I am going to throw in a um, the, the funnel one as well. So I'm going to quickly call my VA. She's going to hate me, but I'm going to call my VA and get her to add the funnel um, strategy video. It's a short video, but it might help explain how that funnel works. because A lot of people get sort of confused with that. So I'm going to throw that in as well. Um, and as I said, that one-on-one -on -one, uh, call, which would be amazing. Please do not book calls if you're not prepared to take them. Um, however, if you're genuinely interested in uh, me looking at your Facebook profile and me answering any of your questions, I'm happy to do that for you. Um, I will, however, also send out that $17 link. And for those of you who, because of my error, didn't get to pay today, if you don't wish to pay, that's fine. I'm still going to send you everything. However, if you feel like you did get good value from today, um, and because of my error, I do apologize. Uh, please, can you, um, yeah, feel free to or to not pay. I won't hold judgment regardless. So if you don't have any other questions, um, I just want to make sure that all of you guys um, are actually on here. So if you could go on and like the Chantel Girardi Facebook strategist page, and I would absolutely love it if you could leave me a recommendation as well. I do love it when you sneak in the business that you have. I love it when you sneak in and you might say, um, and I'll use the business coach as an example, you know, as a business coach, using Facebook with my clients is very important that Chantel shared some of these valuable resources today. Um, that would be really cool. So I do like you to actually sneak in what it is that you do and then show how the value, um, how to, any of today actually helped you. Um, 
Now, one of the other things is to remind you to come back and to check the Facebook page because I'm constantly updating it with valuable information. So you want to make sure you jump on. You also want to make sure that you jump onto the website and subscribe if you haven't already um, and check it because there is our resources going up constantly. I think last week there was an organic, there was a podcast for organic Facebook that went up. There was also uh, one on influencers. So if you're going to collaborate with influencers on how to establish a social media um, uh, agreement. So there's that blog that went up last week. Uh, there was also a blog on TikTok, I think, which is going up this week. Uh, and what was the other one? Oh, there's also a power management tool that went up, which I use with all my clients. So um, heaps of stuff goes out. So you want to make sure that you subscribe. You want to make sure that you check the website and the Facebook page regularly. Um, and then, of course, I'd love you to go in and advertise to your heart's content um, in the free Facebook marketing group. So if you just Google it, free Facebook marketing group, click the group tab, um, Join the group. Uh, there are hashtag themes, but I'm not really strict on that. Um, but I'd love for you to go in and advertise your business and then also just check it out. But I just use that as a platform for my clients to um, start to practice in groups on how groups work and how to utilize groups. Um, so as I said, as a bonus, you're going to be getting the algorithm video. So it's a one hour training video on how the algorithm works. It's, you can just listen to it. Um, there's a 14 day email content series, which is absolutely amazing. And every day for 14 days, you will get um, an email giving you some, giving you a what uh, for that day and why it will work or why, you know, and how you can make it work better. So they're 14 for 14 days, every day for 14 days. So uh, once you start, it'll come every day for 14 days. It's self-paced. You can go and do it whenever you like or whenever, you know, if you miss a day, it's not important. Just go back and find the next one. Um, however, clients that have done the program have done really, really well. Now, we have just upgraded systems, um, which is a nightmare. So I do apologize. We've upgraded Zoom. We've just upgraded our calendar booking system and we've updated our CRM. So if for some reason you go on and you put in the, the passcode for freebie, um, and it doesn't come up um, and you do not get it with like within an hour, uh, please just send me a message and I'll get my VA onto it auto straight away. Uh, you will also get the recording. So we do have to wait probably an hour after this before you can get the recording. Um, and there is an opportunity for you to book a quick, quick call with me to answer any of your questions, look at your profiles um, and yeah, just to explore working together if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, and if you haven't already got it, also there's an ebook called 21 Content Ideas That Outsmart the Algorithm. So um, seriously, I'll take, tell people, take a pen, spin it, and click on it, um, and post that for the day as a challenge. But remember, have intention, have a strategy, have a call to action, so you're actually taking people somewhere. So um, we'll just stop sharing for a minute and just see, does anyone, um, before we go off, I know we're six minutes over, I'm so sorry. I try to get in everything um, as much as I can. But yeah, thank you so much today for jumping on and um, do apologize for any confusion. And I would say check your emails around two o'clock and you should have all that information from then. Any other questions, please reach out guys. Um, so if there are no more questions, we'll call it a day. Uh, thank you for putting up with my head cold, um, but work must go on. <laughs> Thanks guys, have an amazing day.